You better say yes, cause we never, ever, never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever, ever hear the word no. What the hell? <laughs>So we have been going down the rabbit hole and have witnessed some horrendous bits of animation, awful films that are truly the bottom of the barrel. No! Funny enough though, before I started to review these garbage films, I had a bit of a collection in my closet, movies that people have sent to my P.O. box. And there's one in particular that has really caught my attention, Cargo. So my friends and I tried to watch this back in November, but we gave up after 20 minutes. The movie itself is just so boring. I mean, there's plenty of terrible things to laugh at in this film, but there are moments where the characters just sit on the screen and talk back and forth to one another like some kind of terrible sitcom. Now, that's not to say that there aren't some hilariously bad moments in this movie. Trust me, it has them. Jake's car, so brilliant. How about that? Was that cool? More, more. All right, let's go over my five bullet points. Story. Like I said, it's boring, but somewhat original. I was expecting to rip off cars really bad, but they had some unique elements to it. But I can't stress this enough. It really slows down at times. When I was your age, I was in love with Greta Carbo, and I wanted to be Sean Carnery. The voice acting. The majority of it is pretty good, but it definitely has its bad parts. <laughs> You're all in jail. <laughs> Dialogue. Again, not too bad, but there are moments where it gets really slow and really awkward. Cabigail, don't be silly. Don't you care that I care? Sure I care that you care, but I don't care to see you incarcerated. That's so sweet. Well, wait a minute, I'm not saying that I care the way that you care, it's just that young love. Editing. It's not terrible. I mean, at least we can hear the characters, but there are moments that could have been cut down in editing that drag on for way too long. Animation. Now this is where the movie strikes out. Bad textures, low quality, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, and movement and lip syncing that are just way off the chart. Like you can try to ignore it, but <laughs> good luck. Survive, that's the key word. This is too dangerous. That's the point, Cabs. All right, so I tried to look into the origin of this film. First off, I wanted to find out when it was made. For all I know, it could have been made back in the early 2000s, which is somewhat of a soft excuse for a movie. Leo the Lion and Joshua and the Promised Land were made back in 2004, so the technology at the time was still limited. I mean, hey, for all I know, Cargo was made back in 2000 and <laughs> Whoa, this movie was made in 2017? You don't have an excuse. You're either cheap Lazy or both? No! Oh no! Okay, so the folks behind this film are Gordon and James Colin Besick. Gordon has worked as a writer on Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain, so the movie has that going for it. James, though, has worked as a producer, writer, and director for a bunch of movies I have never heard of. Now, that doesn't mean the movies are inherently bad, but uh. Yeah. We got some good voice actors though. Ed Asner, Haley Joel Osment, Melissa Joan Hart, and Jay from Jay and Silent Bob. The biggest problem I see here is the production company for the film, and that's The Asylum. They are notorious for ripping off films and riding the coattails of successful movies. Some of my favorites include Atlantic Rim, Independence Day, and Izzy's Way Home. Your spots keep getting bigger and bigger. 
bigger. Gross. And you know it's bad when the owner of the company refuses to share their identity. All right, whatever. What kind of ratings are we dealing with? On IMDb, we got a 6.2. Wow, uh, that's kind of high. Wait, wrong film. All right, so here it is. 7.6? And Martin Freeman's in this movie? Ah, damn it. Wrong movie again. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it, why are there so many cargo movies? Okay, finally, here it is. A 3.9 on IMDb and a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, that's a bit more realistic. Gross. All right, so before we begin, I wanna talk about the trailers for this movie. They were part of the DVD I was watching and they were just so bad. Like, I thought that South Park was joking when they did their Rob Schneider trailers, but the trailers for these asylum films are actually that way. You're wrong about humans. Some are kind. The trolls will discover. Any weakness, the humans drive us from our homes. It's time for a change. Hi. Only problem is, he's about to become a carrot. First, we got Izzy's Way Home, which is a complete ripoff of Finding Nemo. And the way the trailer end was so abrupt and obnoxious. Izzy's Way Home. <laughs> we got Trollland, which just looks terrible. Like, I think they're trying to pay homage to Lord of the Rings with this scene, but it just looks bad. It's time for a change. Ha. It's time for a change. Ha. And then we got this dog movie, which is like a combination of Home Alone meets Air Bud. And this scene in the trailer does not make any sense. The tire rolls one way and the guy goes the other. Dead. Ah! God, this company just makes bad movies. Ah! My God! Speaking of which, here's the intro. We got ourselves a song already. The first thing you notice is the animation and how when the cars talk, their entire body moves with the case of the car. Like the windows go up, the eyes go up, everything moves with the mouth and it looks really distracting. And there are also other parts of the car that jiggle alongside with it. Danny, bud, the old pukey routine is your best bet. Now. Of course, I don't expect you to perform with the skill of yours truly. So we meet our main character, Danny, who is in school taking a pop quiz, one that he did not study for. So he's trying to think up of a way to get out of the quiz. Surprise quiz? I didn't study. Oh, Danny Carbuncle, super A student didn't study. A car after my own heart. Whoa, whoa, hold on. What's that in the background? Is that a sex toy? There will be no dildos in this classroom. You fail it? You're only the best student in school. Cabagale. Cabagale. Brilliant idea. Tell me, Vin, when you're in juvenile detention garage, would you rather work in the laundry or make license plates? <laughs> I gotta say it again. The lip syncing in this movie is just awful. And what's with the tires? One's going one speed while the other is just stalling. You fail it? You're only the best student in school. In order to get out of the quiz, Danny throws up his vomit oil. You'd better go to the nurse. Though they're not actually going to the nurse's office and go to some street race instead. Go where the fun is and don't sit around and mope. If all you do is study, then you're just a big old dope. <sighs> God, another song. It's gonna be one of those kinds of movies, isn't it? Just go where the fun is and you won't be a schnup. Did, did he say slut? Be a schnup. So Danny and his friend show up to the race where the growly car is hanging out. Hmm. On your mark, get set, go! Why did the camera spin? Was this supposed to wow me? Pull over! 
<laughs> okay, so this cop is one of my favorite characters. Besides his mop mustache, he can't stop saying, pull over. Like seriously, he says it throughout the entire movie. Pull over, pull over. I said, pull over. <laughs> Wait a second. Look at the ramp. It would go right into the trash can. Yeah, whatever. We then meet Danny's dad, who is voiced by Ed Asner. Hi. I'm Ed Asner. Danny, what are you doing home? Uh, I didn't feel well, so I came home. Okay, so is this oil pee or vomit? Because it's come out of both ends at this point. What do you do when you've got a kid? That's the result of everything you did. Uh, another song. And Danny's dad looks really strange doing this one. He's just keeping his mouth open with his teeth gritting. Teach him to work, teach him the skill. Don't be a jerk, always pay bills. They really had to change the pitch of Ed Asner in this song. To avoid the potholes on the streets of life. And one day be the man cook that can get a one. Open your mouth and say, ah. ah. Uh, that's not his mouth. But hey, it could have been worse. Could have been his tailpipe. Maybe you should come to my garage with me. Well, hold on. How is he holding that thermometer? And you know what? And speaking of which, how do cars have kids? And I'm asking you too, Pixar. Don't think that you're completely free from this illogical world. I hated that movie. It was just too unrealistic. A tornado full of cars. Are you serious? That poster actually says Carnado. And for those who don't know, The Asylum owns that movie. That's not you, Danny. You wouldn't say that. The, the ground's kind of glitching out there. So Danny decides to sneak out of his house and go do another race in the city. What kept you boys? I was getting worried. You should worry. You should worry a lot. Then, what are you doing? If he's playing dirty, so are we. Whoa, that's cheating. You just straight up attacked that guy. Pull over! Ah, there he is. The best character in the movie. Street racing is illegal. What are you going to do to us? Names in pink slips. Vin Diesel. Danny Carbuncle. <laughs> what? Were those things just hanging out in your mouth? I seriously don't understand the biology of these cars. Or the mechanics or whatever they are. I'm going to let you kids off with a warning. You're lucky I know your father. He's got a good engine on his shoulders. That's not where engines are. Which, you know, by the way, you guys don't even have shoulders. You don't remember what it's like to be a kid, to have fun, to take risks. I'll never be a stupid mechanic. I'll be something cool, like a race car. If you don't get that bullshit out of my face, bitch. So Danny's dad is hauling him back home, and the other guy crashes into him. No! No! Where's my dad? They took him to ICU. What's that? Intensive car unit. I'm sorry. What? He's been totaled. Totaled? Yes, he's on his way to Clunker Island in the morning. Clunker Island? Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island? All right, so this part's kind of interesting. So when a car is totaled or dies in their world, they go to Clunker Island and have their parts harvested. That's like we taking people who are dying, send them to a place called Corpse Island, where we then harvest their organs. God, this movie is really dark. Next. I think I just need an oil change. I think we've got another one for Clunker Island. No, really, just an oil change. Just an oil change! Oil change! No! Not Clucker Island! No! No! Ah! Like, really, really dark. I can't help but think of the brave little toaster with the junkyard scene. I took a man to a graveyard. I beg your pardon, it's quite hard enough just living with the stuff I have learned. All right, so 
try to follow me on this next part because it's a doozy. So Cabigail and Danny have the idea to get banged up and look trashy so they can go to Clunker Island. But they showed up to the ferry and the guy's like, you guys are way too young for Clunker Island. So Danny said, we should go get banged up at the demolition derby. That way the guy thinks that we're old, but the bouncer won't let them in. So they then go across the street to the theater so they can go in disguise. They go back to the bouncer who says, if you all want to get in this badly, go ahead. I knew your plan the entire time. Look kids, I'm not buying it for a second. You guys are just wearing some costumes. No, we're not. Yes, you are. I heard your plan like an hour ago. So that makes that entire scene at the theater completely useless. Besides some stupid car puns that just won't stop. Let fenders do what tires do. Jake's car, so brilliant. And it gets even worse. Danny goes to the demolition derby and he wins, which completely defeats the purpose of doing anything so far. Boo, pick a plot line. Whoa. I'm stalling! Whoa, whoa, hold on. He's stalling? Is that like the equivalent of a gladiator having a stroke during his battle in a coliseum? Hold on, time out. Uh, I'm having a heart attack. Give me a break. At least the movie's aware of this, but it doesn't make up for how stupid it's been so far. I wasn't supposed to win the demolition derby. I was supposed to get totaled in it. Oh, yeah. And then the Dawn car shows up. <laughs> I mean, look at his stupid hat. I have enough for you get reviews and you won't refuse. I'm the Dawn car. Call me all shanks car. Or should I say, Wazowski. So Danny makes a deal to raise for the Dawn's son, who was the guy who crashed into his dad. And if he loses, he goes to Clunker Island. <laughs> okay, guys, I want a clean race, all right? Keep your engines clean. Boo! Pull over! The cop literally says pull over before even seeing the guy. Pull over! So the race is over and Danny's going to jail, but not before his love interest sings one of the most awkward songs ever. You want to go to Juvie? I want to go wherever Danny goes. You do? I want to go where you go. I want to begin where you end. Dude, that's creepy. So Danny and Cabby go to jail, where they meet one of the most fabulous police officers on the force. Take him away, boys. Yes, sir. Oh, no. You guys better put on cruise control, because you got a long ride ahead of you. Turns out that Danny's friend from earlier is also in the slammer. So they plan to escape jail so they can go to Clunker Island, which just so happens to be right next door. I'm institutionalized. Ain't gonna make it on the outside. What's he talking about? No clue. Oh, come on. Neither of you have seen the Carshank Redemption? Oh my God. Stop with the puns. And what's with the Banjo-Kazooie music? <laughs> You're all in jail. <laughs> So Danny's friend goes off to distract the cops so that they could escape. You don't have to do this, Vin. We can all escape together. There's nothing for me on the outside. But Danny, you just make sure you save your dad. My dude, you were in there only for a few days. So while in the forest, they run into some voice who claims to be the spirit of the forest and that he can grant wishes. I am the spirit of the forest. What are your three wishes? So what do they wish for? Food, of course. Well, I am hungry. How about some food? What kind? Do you want to get Italian food? Ethiopian food? Could you imagine if the spirit of the forest from Princess Mononoke was saying this? Do you want to get Italian food? Ethiopian food? A nice salad? Burritos! So they leave the forest and go through some more trials and tribulations that are completely useless. I mean, this movie so far has been full of pointless parts. The derby, the theater, the jail. They could have just disguised themselves and gone to Clunker Island. But no, it's gotta be long and drawn out. Ah, uh, heads? Heads, you get to go on the ferry. 
tails, I get to eat you. Wait, what the hell? Ew. Gross. Seriously, what the hell is this movie? Okay, so they finally make it to Clunker Island, where they meet some Mad Max cars that say, you can never escape. Though fortunately, they make friends with the daughter of the chief. Why are these strange new cars? We were just going to tear them apart. That's not okay. So Danny finds his dad in a cave put up on blocks. They discover that he's missing his parts and that they need to go out to find them. I'm gonna get you out of here. This team is pathetic. It'll be an embarrassment they'll never ever live down for the rest of their miserable lives until they die. They'll get torn to pieces, ripped to shreds. Some may even lose control of their bowels. By the third inning, they'll be pissing and shitting on themselves right in front of their friends and loved ones. It's gonna be flat out fucking terrible. You know, it makes me wonder, why didn't the hospital fix him up at the beginning? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, you're feeling sick? Well, off to Corpse Island with ya. I can't take this kind of pressure. I must confess, one more dusty road it would be just a road too long. Another song in the style of The Little Mermaid. I wanna go where the autos are. I wanna see wanna see them dancing so danny and his friends find the majority of the parts but they find out that the last part is in some monster truck that danny has to fight Sooner or later i'm gonna get you another song aren't we lucky i'm gonna mush you So the monster truck is defeated and they're able to get the engine. And since they have plus 10 to stealth, they were able to sneak off the island. With that, they go back home and everybody gets some closure. Danny's dad said that he's ready to be a mechanic and join him in the shop, which, uh, you know, makes me wonder. In this world, what's the difference between a mechanic and a doctor? Because as far as I can tell, the doctor is a lot more useless compared to the mechanic. And you know this wouldn't be the conclusion without one more song. Hey guys, I just wanted to give a shout out to my top tier supporters on Patreon. Toongren, Screenflare, Chad Butler, Malkavio, Moondoggy, Illegally Sane, and Julius. Thank you all so much for your support. <sighs> that was, uh... That was a movie, wasn't it? Okay, so here are my final thoughts. The positives. The voice acting was pretty good. And the story is okay. It's a bit bloated and has plenty of boring, unnecessary parts, but it wasn't 100% trash. The negatives. The animation is, uh, eh. It's pretty bad. Not Joshua bad, but still pretty bad. The voice acting never syncs up, and the way the bodies move when the characters speak is just weird. The backgrounds look pretty half-assed too. There are also parts that should have been cut down during editing, and dialogue exchanges that were just plain awkward. Yeah, I mean, you are cool, I, I guess. Wait, so which is it? Am I cool or am I beautiful? Uh, I mean, you are, um... Gross. Overall, this is a bad film. Now, not as bad as Joshua or Leo, but still bad and very long and boring. I mean, kids might like it, but even then, some of the themes will just go right over their heads, like Death Island, where your body parts are harvested for others to use. Honestly, just don't watch this film. It's probably the worst Cars ripoff that has ever been made. Sparky, don't you dare! Whoa!